MRT. Today's video is all about drug administration drug in Wildlife. Many topical medications are used in reptiles to treat skin disease. Antiparasitic agent, disinfectant, ophthalmic solution, cream, and ointment can all be applied topically to reptiles. These types of drugs are intended to deliver local therapy to an affected area without unwanted systemic uptake and adverse effects. Reptiles can be nebulized with a variety of antibacterial or antifungal agents, sterile water, or a combination of these compounds by placing them into a nebulization setup. These chambers should have rubber seals around the access door to reduce drug vapor escape. For the oral route, medications can either be incorporated in the animal's food or given directly to the animal. Drugs can be easily hidden or injected into food items. Oral fluids or drugs can be administered either via a syringe directly into the mouth or with an esophageal or stomach tube. In squamates, the preferred site for giving subcutaneous fluids or medications is over the lateral body wall. In Shalonians, subcutaneous injections can be given in the axillary and inguinal regions. Additionally, in some lizard species, small volumes of medications can be administered in the axillary region. Subcutaneous injections in crocodilians are rarely employed but can be given over the lateral body wall. Intramuscular injections are commonly used for administering drugs because of rapid uptake and distribution. Common locations for intramuscular injections include the triceps and epaxial muscles. In snakes, the epaxial muscles are used, while in lizard and shalonians, muscles of the front limbs are a common intramuscular injection sites. The common sites for intravascular injection in squamates are the jugular vein and ventral coccygeal vein. In large lizards, the cephalic vein can be used to obtain intravascular access. In Shalonians, the subcarapacial sinus is commonly used for delivering intravascular drugs. In reptiles, the salomic cavity is a large space where all the organs are contained that is lined with a highly absorptive salomic membrane. For this route, place the lizard in dorsal recumbency first to allow gravity to pull the viscera away from the ventral injection site. After that, disinfect the injection site with a topical antiseptic. Then, insert the gauge 22 to 25 hypodermic needle paramedian at less than 15 degree angle to avoid the ventral abdominal vein and viscera. Once inserted, aspirate to ensure that the needle was not inserted into the lung, air sac, or bladder. If air or urine or blood is aspirated into the syringe, remove the needle or catheter and replace before reinsertion. Intrathecal injections have been shown to be a viable option for parenterally giving drugs to Shalonians, especially analgesics and anesthetics. This route allows delivery of drug directly into the subarachnoid space. First, disinfect the dorsal tail of the Shalonian. Palpate the tail and if possible, locate an intervertebral space. Insert a hypodermic needle syringe into the intervertebral space. Adjust the insertion angle to assist in correct placement. Begin insertion with a 45 degree angle once the neural arc is penetrated. Then, advance the needle into the spinal canal at a 20 degree angle. As the needle is advanced, maintain slight negative pressure. Upon penetration, clear to straw colored cerebrospinal fluid should enter the needle. But if unsuccessful, redirect the needle until cerebrospinal fluid is aspirated into the syringe. It is common to aspirate blood from the dorsal coccygeal vessel, and if this happens, get a fresh needle and start again. The proximal tibia is the preferred site for intraosseous injection in lizard. For this route, spinal needles with a stylet are preferred to prevent bone coring. However, 18 to 25 gauge needles can be used too. First, a local anesthetic 
antiseptic technique should be used. Then, use the tibial crest as the primary landmark for insertion. Flex the stifle and insert the needle on the tibial plateau anterior to the joint capsule. Lastly, radiography is recommended to confirm proper placement of the needle.